Our cover story tonight is about a suspended Twitter account. Let me show you what it looks like. No display image, no tweets, just two words in bold. Account suspended. Why is this news? Because this account belongs to Dr. Li Meng Yan, a Chinese virologist who has fled China. Dr. Li Meng Yan is the same scientist who said that the Wuhan virus was made in a laboratory. We told you about her on Monday. Dr. Li has leveled some very big charges. She claims that the virus was created in a government-controlled lab in Wuhan, a Chinese government-controlled lab. She also says that there was a cover-up and that she was told to not speak about it. Her story has been reported the world over. Dr. Li says she has proof, proof of China's guilt. But Twitter has decided that she's the one who's guilty, guilty of spreading fake news. They've suspended her account. What is the proof that Dr. Li has? Her scientific report on the origins of the Wuhan virus. The title could not have been more obvious. It says, and I'm quoting, sophisticated laboratory modification rather than natural evolution. The report says the Wuhan virus, and I'm quoting again, shows biological characteristics that are inconsistent with the naturally occurring zoonotic virus. In other words, she says this virus is not natural. It comes from a lab. Her report has three other authors. They all seem to agree. But there are many researchers who don't agree, who question this report. They call it a preprint. What's a preprint? It's a report which has not been peer reviewed. Now here's something you should know. A peer review is like a stamp of approval for any scientific study or claim. When a scientific paper passes the peer review test, it means that independent scientists have read it and they have concluded that the study is valid. But this report, Dr. Lee's report, is not peer-reviewed. Apparently, the scientific community has rejected it. Let me take you through some of those responses. Six leading experts in evolutionary biology have studied Dr. Lee's paper. They say, and I'm quoting, it cannot be given any credibility in its present form. Why? They give two specific reasons. One, the paper offers no new information than what's already in the public domain. And two, the arguments made in the paper are not backed by any scientific data that can be verified. In separate statements to the UK's Science Media Centre, four more scientists have questioned Dr. Lee's paper. This list includes the author of a previous study on the Wuhan virus, a study that said the virus could have come from bats. These experts say Dr. Lee's paper, and again I'm quoting, is highly speculative and does not provide any robust evidence to prove claims of artificial manipulation. It's not just about science, though. There's politics too. Some say there's a political hand behind Dr. Lee's claims and that this paper has been published by two non-profit groups set up by Steve Bannon, who used to be Donald Trump's strategist. What does all of this mean? Is Dr. Lee spreading fake news? Before you decide, remember this. The lab origin claims are as old as the Wuhan virus. The scientific community is still trying to solve the mystery of the origin of this virus. China has not given independent investigators, even WHO teams, any access to Wuhan or its lab. So here's what we say. It is easy to target a doctor who has fled her country and taken on a mighty government. Dr. Li is not the first person who has spoken about a Chinese cover-up or a lab link. Will Twitter take down all such accounts? If this is fake news, will Twitter suspend all accounts which spread fake news? In which case, I would like to draw their attention to five posts which have fake news. Five accounts. The posts were subsequently proven fake. Let me start with one that was posted in the month of March by Hua Chun Ying a spokesperson of the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs. She claims that the Chinese national anthem was played in Rome and that Italians chanted Grazi China, meaning thank you China. This is a fake video. Fact checkers have shown how the footage was dubbed with the Chinese national anthem. Last we checked, this post has not been taken down, not even labeled. This account has not been suspended. 
The second one is from Zhao Lijian, the Chinese wolf warrior diplomat, who said that the Wuhan virus came from American soldiers. This post is still on Twitter with a label that says, get the facts about COVID-19. Well, how about labeling it as fake news? The third post on our list, again, Zhao Lijian's profile, again, the same charge, blame America for the virus. Again, Twitter put a blue label on the tweet, but no suspension of the account. Chinese diplomats are using this platform to spread lies, and Zhao Lijian is a serial offender. In the month of February, he had shared a video of a plane with relief supplies. He claimed that Australian Chinese were sending these boxes to Guangzhou from Melbourne. It was fake news. We come back to Hua Chunyin, defending China over Xinjiang, where Uyghur Muslims are being targeted. She says what U.S. officials say about Xinjiang is the lie of the century. And to back that statement, she shared a story full of unverified theories. Fact checkers have called out China, but Twitter has not. I've given you only five examples. There are many more. And this is not whataboutery. This is an attempt to show you a contrast. Chinese diplomats spread lies, and all Twitter does is label them as state-affiliated. A Chinese whistleblower makes a charge, and Twitter suspends her account. I'm not a scientist. I'm not qualified to defend Dr. Lee's study. It must go through the scrutiny of the scientific community. But she should not be denied a platform to share her story. Twitter anyway is on a sticky wicket, and it's going easy, going after rather, easy targets. A study by MIT revealed that fake news travels six times faster on Twitter than the truth. The research says that falsehoods are 70% more likely to be retweeted. The social media giant is under fire, so it started labeling government accounts. It hid tweets posted by U.S. President Donald Trump. It started tagging state media, starting with Chinese state media, to be fair. But is the targeting of a Chinese whistleblower a political balancing act? We asked these questions to Twitter through an email. It has not responded yet.